but wanted to know how a dozer works, I'm going to take you with me and I'm going to show you how I use a dozer. This is our horse arena we're currently cutting in. The bulldozer is the most efficient way to move, cut and push the earth. It just saves so much time. Great machine, very easy to use but once you learn how to slowly move the controls. We may as well give you a quick rundown. 27 and a half ton bulldozer. Well, these are actually caterpillar rippers on a Komatsu and people go, why does it have three rippers? It's a D6, it should have one. No. It, it works perfectly fine. When you're ripping up this quarry rock, it just saves so much time. Imagine doing it with one single ripper the whole way. But normally we have a tree spike on this bad boy, but we've taken the tree spike off. Sorry, I'm trying to walk through. <laughs> Look at that. That is just... And this is the beautiful six angled blade. With the rippers, they're the same. They can be angled and they go up and down. So we can angle them because when you're ripping rock, you really want to angle your rippers towards the machine. So it's going to rip pulling towards, not down. Let's get into this machine. We've got to enter the bulldozer. So always when entering a machine, three points, you have to have rather two feet on and one leg or vice versa okay everyone so this is the interior of the dozer it's like an office in here that's your steering controls and your speed controls over here is your blade controls and that is your ripper controls and obviously the two safe we're going to let it idle just for a minute or two before raising our revs up just to give the engine a chance to warm up a bit run through the controls one more time so for this control if I push it forwards the dozer goes forwards if I push it back it goes back and it stays in those positions so it's not like I hold it there once I push it forwards it stays forwards and then I can turn it left or right and the tracks will swivel this is our uh, revs I always keep that up max press throttle so that is the one as you can see it's warmed up so now we're going to turn it right up so down here's our decompressed pedal so mind my dirty boot this is going to need to clean out after this week in here because it's just so muddy out there but that will control our revs this one is our blade control this is our ripper control. So to activate everything, we have to pull these levers up, as you can see. They basically tell you you can't get in and out of the machine um, when these are up. Um, we're gonna let our revs up. We're gonna raise our rippers using that. Then we're going to raise our blade using the right. And as you can see, so tilt, left, tilt, and then we can pitch the blade at different angles. Obviously go up and down, it's quite easy. The middle foot pedal is the brake. You do not use the brake unless it's an emergency. I never use it. Let's see how it's gonna handle on this mud. Fine. But as you can see, the dozer drives itself. If I pass out in the dozer, it will just keep on going. There is nothing stopping the dozer um, from stopping unless I slow it down by putting my foot on the de-accelerator or I take it out of gear by pulling this back. This is how easy it is to turn the dozer. It's just left and right. It's a very small increment. And same with your blade. You really want to be very slow when moving your blade around. The smallest bit of movement in your blade will change your cut completely and you end up with bumps everywhere and crap. You just need to keep it very slow, very steady, feel the machine. It's like an exoskeleton to you. But we're going to do our first mud cut. So let's see how wet it actually is down here. But you see just very small movements with my hand to keep the blade level. And you don't particularly look down at the bottom of your blade either. I've always learnt to look up in your horizon, look up where you're going and sort of just feel your machine. Your machine's designed to be very reactive so you can feel what it's doing. It's also very slippery at the moment as well so it's trying to drag me down the hill a bit. 
<laughs> That's wet. Jeez, look how far I sunk in there. Another great thing I've learned is when you're just pushing topsoil like I am and this isn't the final cut, don't overstress about where you're cutting or what you're doing or where the dirt's ending up or if you're leaving bumps behind. I always keep the machine going full speed. Even when grading, I try and keep the machine full speed. Don't stress yourself out. I've always seen that when I go slower, you end up with more problems than anything else. It's really easy just to keep your foot off the accelerator the whole time and just focus on what's going on out the front and where you're going and how the machine's reacting and how, how you feel about it. But as you can see, you know, the machine's just driving itself and we're just going to keep on slowly cutting this soil. Look how straight that cut came out, just from a quick run over, you know? It's, I'm not even trying to make it straight, I'm just sort of pushing the dirt, if that makes sense. I'm not focusing too much on making it level at the moment. But using a bulldozer is really, really straightforward. It can be very daunting because of how large it is, but at the same time, once you get used to the size, it sort of just feels like you're driving a skid steer because it's like an exoskeleton. You know where your whole body is, you know where you're at, and you feel comfortable using it. I've obviously got a lot of experience on a lot of machines from big excavators, small excavators, telehandlers, all that. For me, it's definitely quite easy. Some people do find it very challenging. I, when I first used a dozer, it took me about a week to learn how to properly fill it out. So I didn't pick it up like overnight, but at the same time, it didn't take months and months of learning. It only took a week before I could really start grading and getting some good results using this machine. So coming up to this stage, we're gonna hit rocks and boulders that are going to throw the dozer out and it can get frustrating, but don't let it frustrate you. If you really get stuck, you can rip and just push it up with the rest of your topsoil, but I prefer to keep the topsoil and the rest of the rock we're going to cut and fill with very separated. I don't want any of this gray, dark soil with uh, nice lighter color rock and stuff like that because this stuff will make the pad an absolute mess. But you will find since you're not ripping that rock and you're just trying to take that crap layer off the top that those rocks that are underneath are going to throw your bucket out of line and you'll end up with something like that. As you can see there's rocks starting to come through, it's throwing the machine a tiny bit out of line but that's easy to correct as you can see once I got past those rocks is completely flat. But don't stress about it, you're going to rip that anyway. So if you're building a pad like this, really isn't something to worry about. Just watch how much I sunk there. I'm like, yeah, I'm not gonna continue straight there. <laughs> We're gonna come up this way. And if you don't feel comfortable with taking a cut or you mucked up a cut, easy. Just reverse and start again but start maybe on a different angle if it's wide enough or try and cut your little drains out if you're if you're struggling with that i know a lot of people starting with a dozer end up just doing this they end up doing stuff too fast and their machine is it doesn't need that much movement they're thinking that it's, it's coming out flat but it's not you really with a dozer I recommend to everyone when you're using a dozer, grip your hand around the actual control for your blade. Not do this and that because you're going to cut too fast, you're going to create bump, you're just going to ruin your job. So the easiest way is literally nice and slow and keep your hand wrapped around it as tight as you can and you can just slowly move your blade around because that's, see those little increments? That's all you're gonna be doing, chasing it to cut it how you want. And you've gotta feel your machine as well. Feel how it wants to react. So I hope you learned something cool today about the bulldozer. Obviously it's a very daunting machine from the outside. It's a very heavy and large machine and you have to be careful. People go, oh, bulldozers never flip. 
flipped. They do flip. You can easily flip a bulldozer if you get it in the wrong angle. So it's just like any other machine. So make sure that you are always careful with them. They're not a very scary machine. I'm gonna actually send you guys out and I'm gonna get some outer shots so you can see what I'm doing from the outside. It sort of looks like a mess at the moment, but remember this whole thing's on a hill and we're just taking the topsoil off. So it's always going to be still on the slope for now until we get rid of that topsoil. Thank you everyone for watching. I hope you learned something new and I'll catch you all next time.